the EU European Union mission observer mission reports announces that Nigeria's election lacked transparency. And uh, speaking on this, uh, the EU mission, um, the member states who are up to 110, um, and Canada, Norway, Switzerland, who monitored the conduct of our election, said the electoral exercise um, has been undermined by inconsistencies. The observer said that their preliminary report, um, the, the confidence in the National Electoral Commission significantly waned. Um, they also said that um, the electoral body suffered lack of planning. Um, meanwhile, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has rejected the report of the European Union on the election observation mission, describing it as a product of poorly done desk job. Um, he said the EU did not provide any substantial evidence um, viable enough to question the integrity of the 2023 election and its outcomes. Well, joining us to discuss this tonight and break it apart is Angu Ongu. He is a public affairs analyst. Also joining us uh, is Shekun Shopito. Um, Angu, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. Evening. Good evening, Nigerians. Good evening, uh, the beautiful Plus that TV is good to okay. have me in your studio this evening again. Okay, Angu, thank you for joining us. Let's go straight to it. So um, many have, including INEC, have uh, pushed back on this EU report. But let's let's look at the content of that report. Uh, majorly, the EU observers are saying that um, mostly the, the attackers on INEC and, of course, um, what INEC had presented to Nigerians and, of course, the world um, in on its level of preparation and what the observers saw on ground. The biggest question here is, let's start with INEC. INEC has been one of the first people to challenge the EU's position on that report. Is INEC in a position to actually be pushing back on reports such as this, knowing that INEC served us a big bag of uh, you know, promises, but then we only got crumbs at the end of the day. Yeah, very true. Uh, the elections were marred with several and many, many irregularities. Uh, the contenders are at the presidential election petition tribunal at the RP court. And some of those issues raised by the European Union are some of the issues that are in public domain, some of the issues that are being challenged at the uh, election petition tribunal. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that uh, the presidency, the Nigerian presidency, is now the mouthpiece of uh, INEC, uh, it looks, uh, it looks, it sounds really, really funny. But uh, whatever was said by, or whatever report or indictment of the European Union on the institution called INEC is what is in the public domain. It's just that, it, is it because it is the uh, EU that is saying it now? Uh, Nigerians have been on the street protesting. Uh, somehow I was part and parcel of uh, the protest. We even took a protest later to the European Union that, look, the election did not meet uh, uh, the lay down guidelines. Up to today, as I speak, INEC cannot defend the results they use in declaring a winner at that presidential election at the election petition tribunal, its own deputy director, ICT, as at yesterday and today, could not defend it. They said, look, he said, look, 31% of the result that was used in declaring a winner uh, is blood and, and unreadable. So uh, the European Union has not uh, said or anything far-fetched. Uh, apart from what is already in the public domain. Nigerians already uh, are aware, Nigerians already mm -hmm. know that the elections did not follow uh, the, 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 the laid down guidelines. 
Let, let's look at some of the major issues that were picked on by the European Union. Uh, they said that this election actually exposed an enduring systemic weakness and therefore um, signals the need for further legal operational reforms uh, to enhance transparency, inclusiveness and accountability. Let's look at the weaknesses here. Now, because many of us have continuously dwelled on the issue of the upload of the results. Let's look at the processes, the electoral processes, and if they were followed through totally. He's talking about an exposure of weaknesses. What weaknesses do you think that the EU is EU is referring to here? Um, because again, if we're looking at the issue of violence, this is something that has continued to um, erupt before, during, and after our elections. And we've continued to sue for peace. Peace pacts have been signed over and over again, but that has not necessarily addressed the issue of violence. Um, some other weaknesses are, you know, the issue of um, transmission of results, where many have also queried that results are written and sometimes it's not the results that you get at the polling units that are gotten at the end of the day. So are these mostly the weaknesses? And and and, and they have also, also talked about um, some solutions that they think we should look at, but let's start by talking about these weaknesses. Now you said also that INEX ICT boss has said that he's not, has in real words, not been able to defend some of the results because of the blurry nature of this result. But then INEC is one of those to first hop on this issue and say, well, um, this is very biased and you need to give us facts, including the presidency saying, you've not given us any clear cut fact as to why you think the selections were not free, fair and credible. It's, it's, thank you very much, uh, Mimi. It's, it's, it's funny. It's funny that, uh, like I said, it, it sounds really funny for the presidency, for INEC themselves to be coming out to defend the indefensible. Uh, one of the legal issues around that election is the issue of for any candidate to be declared winner, you must call 25% total votes in the FCT, clearly spelled out in the electoral laws of this country. That is one of the legal issues that needs to be straightened out. So, some of the legal issues are issues of, did he really score this vote uh, uh, that you are saying came in from some of the states? Because if INEC did not have a close to 31% unreadable and blurry uh, uh, results, how did INEC, how, how did the INEC boss arrive at a collation and eventual declaration of a winner. So, uh, from what you said, we've said that a character like uh, Mahmoud Yakubu uh, is actually the glitch. If they were saying there was any glitch on the website of INEC, it was human glitch, particularly for the presidential election. It has been proven that look, all the other results, three elections took place that day, the Federal House of Representatives, the senatorial election, and the presidential. And the presidential. Yes. What happened? Only the presidential election had this glitch. All the from the confirmation, uh, the PDP uh, brought in about 31 or 33 uh, witnesses, and some of them worked at ad hoc staff. They said, Look, all the, uh, the two other elections they were able to upload it freely, but when it came to the gateway for them to upload the uh, the result for the presidential, they experienced a glitch. And that was experienced all over the country. To say okay. that the, uh, the INEC boss should be cooling his heels uh, uh, somewhere. He should be with the DSS the same way uh, this new government 
was very quick to arrest the CBM boss, the former CBM boss now, suspended and arrested him. The same way they suspended uh, the EFCC boss and arrested him. It is the same way the uh, Mahmoud Yakubu. Okay, Angle, we're going to come back to you. Let's go to Shago. You should be putting uh, a now. Okay, Angle, we'll come back to you. Let's go to Shago. Shago, um, thank you for joining us. Let's go quickly to some of the observations of the EU um, observation team. Um, they talked about reforms in six areas. Um, they, they mostly looked at the weaknesses, and that's what I was talking to Angle about, the week that, that this election exposed certain weaknesses in our system. But there's something that continue, continuously pokes at me, the issue of impunity. And, you know, they talked about election criminality and how things were done with reckless abandon. And don't forget, these guys are only observers. They're supposed to write a report as to what they saw happen in every area that they observed the elections. Even though the presidency has said that, look, this is biased and you've not given us any facts as to what makes you conclude that these elections were not free, fair, and credible. Um, but looking at that report, Shegel, what exactly do you see um, and agree with in that report, being that you were also part of that election in February? Shagun, can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Shepard, can you hear me? I, I do not think that we can hear you. Unfortunately, um, we have lost that connection. So, Angle, let me come back to you again because it looks like we've lost that connection with Shagun. Um, looking at the issue of impunity here, every single time we talk about corruption or um, you know, leadership and bad governance in Nigeria, the issue of impunity comes up. And uh, many would say that that's because um, we have not also led, um, you know, a life of justice and people paying um, for crimes committed against the state and across the people. But the impunity here that um, the EU is talking about, they're looking at it as things that were done during this election, reckless abandon. Why do you think that these kinds of impunity continue to hold sway in our electoral process, knowing how far we've come in terms of democracy? Uh, you see, the, the, the impunity, it's, 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 it's systemic. You know, people go against the law. People do a lot of things that against the law and nothing seems to happen. Just like the case we are seeing with uh, Mahmoud Yakubu today. Clearly, this man made a lot of promises, helped uh, Nigerians build trust again, in, uh, had a lot of stakeholder engagement, only for him to uh, go back and renege on his very commitment to the law to the Nigerian constitution and to the Nigerian people. And because he knows that even if he does that, uh, those he has favored, as in the case of the present administration, we do nothing to him. You see that he still goes ahead to do it. When last, what last, do you, when last, or what last have we heard of uh, the, the Hutu, Abu Hudu man from Adamawa State? That in fragrant abuse of office, abuse of law, and everything went ahead and declared somebody a winner when he was not well, even the returning officer for that election. And what his, matter is, his, his matter is actually before a court. Um, I think two days ago it was reported that he will be arraigned and um, his matter will be addressed in the course of law. So that is pending. How about the DSS boss, director that was with him? the civil defense, the commissioner of police that was with him, what, ha what has happened to them? So it is now, so we are now raising a generation of young people that feel that, look, I, I, I can do and undo. So long as I have somebody that is in government or something, I can go away with a wrongdoing. And it is mm. something that we all need to work against. We all need to find a way to see how 
ethics, morality is brought back into our actors, into our daily lives as a people, as Nigerians. So there should be consequences for wrongdoing. Mm. And if there are no consequences for wrongdoing, we'll be raising a generation that believes in impunity, a generation that does not believe in hard work. The other day, this present generation was saying, look, with the array of case cases against the, the current president, uh, that maybe Hush Puppy, the very popular uh, internet uh, fraudster, can go and do play bargain in America tomorrow and come and become president in Nigeria. Because the president, the present uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu is the same Ahmed Bola Tinubu that forfeited over $460,000 uh, uh, money that were related to heroin or drug uh, connection, drug deals. It is the same Ahmed Bola Tinubu that is Nigerian president today. So okay. what are we telling the next generation? That you can I, be a criminal I, because you can mass money or go into politics. I, I'm, I'm going to bring you back. Very go, it is unacceptable. Go, yes, I want to bring you back to something that you just said. You talked about the issue of getting justice and putting an end to impunity. Let's look at the people who are saddled with the responsibility of putting an end to this impunity. I'm talking about the Senate, um, generally, the National Assembly, the judiciary, um, which at some point we used to refer to as the hope, uh, the last hope of the common person, but I don't know if that's still the case today, um, giving the benefit of doubt because this case of the election is still in court. But most importantly, if most of these people that are saddled with the responsibility of making sure that impunity is put to an end or brought down to its barest minimum or nowhere to be found in any administration going forward, are beneficiaries, these same people are beneficiaries of this same impunity. Who's to say that we will ever be able to say or kiss goodbye to impunity or uh, acts of electoral violence in forthcoming elections in the future? Andrew, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We seem to be... Okay. Uh, Nigerian's case is a very dear case. Uh, it was it not uh, the validatory section of the Nigerian Senate when Senator Bushawa, husband to the former Court of Appeal president, stood up to give his validatory message to say, "Look, I encroached on my wife, and my wife was able to have some of you here return to the Senate." That was one of the days of national disgrace for our country and for the hallowed uh, uh, institution called the Nigerian Senate. The Senate president, as a then, Ahmed Lawan, had to even stop him. That I'm a senator, you don't have to go that way. The wife came out and wrote a very lame uh, press release saying her husband never encroached on her and all of that. Who are those who investigate those allegations? So, uh, when Nigerians are tired of impunity, Nigerians will arise and take back their country. I haven't said that. I know that there are few Nigerians that are men and women of integrity. So all hope is not lost. They said 99 days for the thief, but one day is for the owner. So speaking of the Senate, it's a highly respected institution. And as a very good student of the Bible, it was being said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> you know, I believe that no matter the rottenness or the corruption, I don't know what was it that was peculiar to Nazareth, that it was believed that nothing good can come out of it. But uh, lo and behold, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, came out of uh, Nazareth. So mm -hmm. even as it is quite dear uh, that uh, 
nothing good can come out of the Nigerian Senate, but I also believe that okay. one day a Messiah may even arise from that Senate. So I can, okay. uh, a friend said, hope is not strategy, but uh, we can only hope for the best for our country. Let me let me look at some of the um, the resolutions or the um, observations that these um, gentlemen and women from the EU observation team have put out. Um, most importantly, they talked about removing ambiguities uh, in the law um, and also asking for publicly accountable selection process of INEC officials, um, making sure that the right people are put in that office. Also, they've, they've also talked about the fact that we need to deal with uh, discrimination against women, um, addressing the discrimination against women um, Very serious in, in electoral processes. Yes. Um, and, and they also talked about the fact that a lot of Nigerians were very, very excited to participate in the elections as opposed to what the outcome of the elections were. So let's take it bit by bit in the next five minutes. Let's address them one after the other. Um, electoral reforms. We keep talking about electoral reforms, Angle. Um, many of us were very glad when Senate former President Buhari signed, yeah. um, signed into law, um, you know, the um, electoral acts as amended. But what has he really done for us, um, looking at what happened in the elections? It was Obama, when Obama was in, uh, the president of America, when he came to Ghana. He said, Africa needs strong institutions, not strong men. And seemingly, uh, what he said, uh, we see it happen every day in Africa, that Africa have more strong men than strong institutions. And just like he mentioned, one of the issues uh, how are uh, electoral commissioners elected to the IMEC board? How is the chairman elected or appointed? That should that prerogative should not be left with in the hands of politicians. If we really, really want to nurture our democracy, that prerogative should not be left in the hands of politicians entirely. I'm not saying that politicians' hands will be taken off it completely, but it should not be left in their hands entirely. And as it is in Nigeria, a uh, uh, winner takes all. You know, when you are declared winner, you know that you are in charge. Every other person goes. To tell you that our institutions are not yet strong. So the processes of electing or appointing electoral commissioners and even the INEC chairman we should look at our legal framework and tweak it so that the people will have a say on it. That brings okay. me down to one of the points we've been raising, the issue of independent candidature that I've not been able to sail because several of the houses of assemblies in Nigeria refused that from sailing through so that we can have independent candidature. So mm. the, the, I, the independent in INEC, INEC should be made to be independent truly. The issue of uh, women, it is shameful that in the whole Nigerian Senate today, we have just three women. And it is unprecedented in the history of Nigeria that for the first time we have such, so the Beijing Convention and all of that, what happened to it? Uh, that, that big, big, big question, big question, Angle. I, I wish that we had more time. I wish we had more time to continue this conversation. Unfortunately, our time is up, but I will bring you back because we need to, I think we need to mull over these recommendations um, of the That's EU right. observation team and then, of course, um, have a more robust conversation. But I want to say thank you. Angle Angle is a member of the People's Democratic Party and also political analyst. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mimi. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Bit divided over the uh, accomplishments of the Bola Net Tinubu administration as it celebrates its one month in office. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>